God bless you, my beloved. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible teaching. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. We have a good Bible study teaching this evening, and I pray that each and every one of you that are listening to this teaching will be blessed and learn through it. Our title this evening is The Flesh and Self-Glorification. Our main scripture is from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, and verse 17 which reads as follows, For the flesh lusteth after the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things you would. My beloved, on a serious note, all of us have experienced times of being as isolated as possible from the influence of the world's rebellious culture, perhaps while on a vacation, or a wilderness hike, or a camp out or at a retreat, or during a quiet hour of communication with God in an isolated prayer closet. Maybe in that solitary setting, your health, the weather, and the immediate environment around you was also as perfect as it can be on this side of eternity. My beloved, there are quiet places, like up on a mountaintop, in a forest. Of course, you understand that whenever you want to get along with God, interruptions will come. When I go into my prayer closet, a lot of times, I hear a noise, somebody revving their engine, a ring at the doorbell. Things like this happen. But my beloved, we need to continue to focus on what our purpose is for being alone with God. And the main purpose is to have communication with God. Let him know how we feel, what our needs are. He knows already, but he wants us to express them to him. The important thing is we need to hear from God. We need direction from God. So we need to spend time in prayer. It should also be noted that when we ask God for something, we don't need to keep on rattling off all the time, but we need to be quiet and listen to that soft, still voice. During this isolated time, it seems as if temptation still comes. Things enter into our mind, whether it's the past or a desire that we have in us, or we feel a desire rising in us. Beloved, these things happen, but we cannot let these thoughts come in between us and God. How frustrating it is that an enemy can come against us like that. The enemy comes at the very fabric of our humanity. He's been watching us since we were born, but God knew us before the foundations of the world. So God knows us better. He knows what we are going to do. He knows how we are going to repel the adverse thoughts. As Christians, we are regenerated and justified and covered in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But, my beloved, that does not exempt us from temptation. You and I, as Christians, are a real deal and have been completely remade to interact with God through Jesus Christ and to have fellowship with him. Imagine fellowship with the creator of the universe. How amazing is that? We have been enabled to love God, to serve God, and to obey him. As Christians, we are endowed with a new heart that at its very core bears in one accord with God's truth and the righteous standards of Jesus Christ. You see, my beloved, deep down, we desire to love God and to serve him in every area area of our lives, regardless of what the world pressures try to do to us. First Peter chapter 2 in verse 11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. My beloved, remember that your flesh is always fighting against you. As a Christian, you must always be aware of this and not think that you are above temptation or falling into sin because you are not. We strive to be righteous and perfect, but at times we all fail. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21 says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Beloved, when Christ returns, he will change our sinful body into a glorious one that will never be corrupted again. Romans chapter 8 and verse 30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. 
So my beloved, we are, even though we are in our body, made to be justified and be glorified when we come to Jesus Christ and receive him as our Savior and Lord. The word is there. Let me read that to you again. This is exciting. Romans chapter 8 and verse 30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, that's us as Christians, them he also called, we are called by him, and whom he called, them he also justified. So that means we are justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Now we have to look at this from, not in this earthly realm, but in the realm to come. My beloved, we have already been justified and glorified because we received Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Beloved, our personal completion of transformation intended by God when he saved us will be complete when we are with Jesus. That relates to what I just said about being predestined, justified, and glorified. Everything will be complete. The moment we take our last breath here on earth, we will be in the presence of God and Christ, and we will be new. We will be completely justified and completely glorified through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We will be totally complete, lacking nothing. My beloved, you should be excited to know that. My beloved, nothing in this world is worth giving that up for. My beloved, there are many who are dying every day. They are dying in sin and going to hell every day because they refuse to deny the things of the flesh, to deny the things of this world. They would rather have everything that they can get, everything they could amass in this life, in this short amount of time, which is nothing compared to eternity, rather than have Jesus Christ and give something up in his temporary life. My beloved, God loves you, and Jesus died for you, and he wants to give everyone that peace, that peace that passes all understanding. He wants everyone to kill the flesh and receive the things of God through Jesus Christ. My beloved, the title of our teaching this evening, The Flesh and Self-Glorification. You see, when you yield to the flesh and you glorify yourself through the things of the flesh, you are going to hell unless you repent. And having said that, I want to offer you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You must be sorry for your sins. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, and only through him can you go to heaven. You must believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose again from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, as God sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of all power and all majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you want to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. Please pray this prayer with me. Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I come before you. Forgive me of my sins. I am sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, and only through him am I able to get to heaven. I believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose again from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at your right hand, Father God, in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. I confess this today. And I believe through my repentance and my profession and confession of faith in Jesus Christ, I have become a Christian. And when I die, when I leave this life, when I take my last breath, I will be in the presence of you, Father God, and Jesus Christ for all eternity. And I thank you for saving me today, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My beloved, if you truly repented, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. Get an audience with a pastor. Now, this church must preach directly from the Bible, from the whole Bible, all 66 books, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, not adding to or taking away from the Holy Scriptures. Ask the pastor to anoint you with oil, to pray for you, to pray with you, to give you a Bible if you don't have one, to mentor you, to teach you, lead you, and guide you, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then what I would like you to do is contact me at Abundant.com grace at att.net. You may also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net. You may follow us on YouTube, Spreaker, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Pinterest. Or you may Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria, or Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian, Texas. But please, let me hear from you. Our Wednesday night Bible teaching has been 
the flesh and self-glorification from the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, which reads, For the flesh lusteth after the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. God bless you, my beloved, and please continue to follow our ministry. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I am the senior pastor of Abundant Grace Church.